Happy Hanukkah. And tonight is the fifth night of Hanukkah. It's really special. And it's even more special because I'm going to get to speak with Liba from Spirit Fit Life, who is super energizing and inspirational. And she is a woman from Arizona who has this organization, Spirit Fit Life, who helps women from all walks of life reach their goals, whether it's in confidence, fitness, whatever it is. And she's going to share with us her journey, how she started it, how she got to Ninja Warrior, and just her idea of confidence and how to maintain confidence and everything we need to know. So I hope you enjoy. And I'm looking forward to hearing feedback. Feel free to leave comments or just um, email hana at hanabana.com and share with anyone that you think it might be valuable to enjoy. So happy Hanukkah and hello, Liva. Hey, hey, I'm so excited to be here. I know we've waited so long to finally make this happen. So um, Liva, you are the founder from Spirit Fit Life. And I've been following you for like the past little while. And I want to hear more about your journey. What is Spirit Fit Life? How did you start it? Tell us. Mm, that's loaded. Okay. Should I start with how I started it? Go for it. Okay. So um, Spirit Fit Life has been around for about four and a half years now. Um, before I started it, though, I did a lot of things. Like I was a doula, a childbirth educator. I owned my own um, personal training gym. Um, I, I ran nonprofit programs for teens. I did a lot of different things. But what I really realized was that I wasn't really helping people. I was like partially helping them and then leaving them hanging. Like it wasn't actually really changing and helping people. And it was something that I, I knew was missing. And I've always, at everything I've always done, like I enjoyed it, but there was always like this like heaviness. Like I, right? Like it wasn't just like, it wasn't like now I feel like the time flies. I don't even know the sense of time because I, I enjoy it so much. Right. So I knew that there was something missing and, you know, really all started with my own journey of myself, which, which, you know, was the start of my story. Like I have a daughter, my firstborn is Tihila. Um, and she, she was born with hair, but she lost all her hair at the age of about three. Mm. Um, so right now she's a bold beauty. Um, and you know, she was little and I it was my first kid. So I was young. So I lived in Israel. And um, was you were, you were living I never, in Israel? yes, we lived in Israel um, until she was about four. Um, and so I was like a young new mom and I never heard of alopecia before. Um, What's but, it called? You know, alopecia. Alopecia. I literally went home and Googled it. Um, yeah. And it, yeah, literally. So like the doc I was in America this summer and no doctor picked it up in Israel. I went to the doctor there. They're like, she has alopecia right away. And so in the beginning, it was like, this can't be like, of course, she's going to grow her hair back. Like what girl doesn't have hair? Right. Yeah. And then pretty fast, I realized that, okay, this might, this may stay. And the first thing was like, how in the world am I going to raise a daughter in this world? that is so much pressure. Who has no hair, let yeah. alone a healthy daughter. Yeah. I myself struggled so much with my own confidence. Like, and I didn't, and I had hair. And here for me was like a big part of my beauty. I had really long blonde, like light white blonde hair. And everyone knew me for that. It was like a big part of who I was, even though I oh, covered it then, nice right? So it was just like, yeah, it was like a big, thank you. It was a big, big part. So it was like, there was so much emotion there. But the main thing was like, how am I going to do this? Like, I'm petrified, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, so it became very clear that, that the only way to do that was if I myself was confident. Like in myself, if I looked in the mirror and I was like, and I felt really good, mm -hmm. that is something she would say. And I didn't. I, like people think this is how I was and how I am always. Like I was so far from this. I was so insecure and uncomfortable in my own skin um, to an extreme. And, 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 I, and what I really understood was like, you can't fake it. No matter what, you can't fake it. You can't pretend. You can't internally think it, but not say it. You yeah. can never say a word. She'll, they'll pick it up, right? So that was where my journey started of like working on myself and building myself and my own self-confidence and till the fact of like, 
I never even like people used to stare at us and like say comments and make say weird things and oh, especially in Israel people are very straight up right so and so. You, right they'll be like Matasse! like like as if I did something you know you know yeah. and then you know when we went back to visit a few years later I was like why did I think people in Israel stare at us like because it didn't matter like we joke about it we laugh and people like stare like look at the person on the right right like it's there's no a, a negative emotion attached but right. that was like because because I wasn't giving off any negative emotion or any pitying or any victimizing. And so that was where my journey started. And it turned into like me, like really like my passion of um, understanding the value of what a mother has in her family, of her own health, of her own mental health, that like if we can change and we can grow, then we're going to change the world. Like generations change. So we put so much into our kids and we invest in them and this and that, but like we don't understand the value that we have in their growth. You know, so that's a big part of like what Spare for Life is. Spare for Life is a program that helps women become the leaders of their life by building strength from the inside out, in a nutshell. So from what I'm understanding is like you guide women to find their inner confidence in their own life so that like to just change their life. So it's like building strength from the inside out, right? A lot of women, they, they, they're they willing to, they want to change physically how they look. They don't like how they look. They're not comfortable with their own skin, mm -hmm. right? So that's why they go on diets and do all this stuff, but yeah. it doesn't really help because internally you're not changing. So right. I want to help women actually really whatever, like if they, if they have, they want to be stronger physically, change yeah. it any way for it to be real. So that, right. and the only way to do that is to internally heal whatever is going on. Um, so it's, it's, it's built, it's finding their own inner strength and actually healing the source of whatever it is. So, so is, we have all of it. I mean, there's fitness and nutrition and everything's part of our program. Okay. okay. So you have the fitness, the nutrition, you probably also have coaching. Coaching is also like psychologically, it's so important. I'm guessing also with your daughter, because like in order to be confident enough for your daughter that has like alopecia, you need to be so rock solid, confident internally. And I think that is like 90% psych psychological. It like takes the motivation to like, I don't know, look at yourself in the mirror every morning and just recite to yourself, I love you, you're beautiful, you're you're strong. Like, I think there's, there has to be so much that goes into it that's that's like psychological. For sure, yeah. I mean, um, the, we have a whole mindset part of our program and it's like the inner work we have, we do one of our coaches is a therapist. Like we do real work. Like it's not just like where our coaches are professionals and we do a lot of somatic work, like somatic, which is like real, like healing stuff. Yeah. Um, you can't look in the mirror and just say, I'm beautiful, I'm beautiful. And internally you, you're, you don't believe it at all. So it's like, you need to go into like, why don't I feel like this? What underneath all those things is actually going on for me? So for example, I'll give you a real example. Yeah. I'm just tiny, right? I'm 4'11". I was so insecure about my height. And to think about it like this, I felt so small mentally that I, that, that like, who's gonna, like, I felt like, who's gonna, like, when I talk, nobody, like, no one's gonna listen. I'm so small, I'm so unimportant. Like, it, it, like I felt emotionally small, right? Yeah. And, and no one knew, I looked so confident. I was so like confident, right? And now I'm a, somebody who speaks and everybody listens. You know what I'm saying? So it's crazy, like, like from, going from the extreme, but it's because, internally I feel so big right so there is no insecurity about my smallness anymore I I was sh like ashamed of myself but right. it's like building like who I am and actually going to the source of where that came from it's only then that are you able to actually heal and that's the real work um you know that we do with our clients because everybody has those things right I think also sometimes when someone like stands out with their height or with their differences it gives them like a louder voice and I also can see how the world can seem daunting for someone who's a little bit different. Like today I was walking in the morning and I saw this a midget, a midget girl on the other side of the street. She asked me for like help for directions. And like, I, you know, I offered to help her. She was walking in the same direction as me. So we're walking together. And, and there was this couple that was passing by and like, they both just happened to laugh about something. Like I was trying to put myself in her shoes and I was trying to think like, if I was her, and I saw these mm -hmm. people look my way and laugh, I would probably think they're laughing at me. And like the world can seem like such a perceived, like such a dark place when, when it's like that. So like 
to get out of your world and to reach a place where you're so like so confident it sounds like a revolution it sounds like a really something that would take so many years right well so it's like it's interesting because you know when my daughter was little people used to be like look at that girl she has no hair right like kids say whatever they want and she would come over to me and be like can you see it i don't have any hair and i'll be like okay like no emotion do you have any hair she's no so i would i would say i would look at you if i didn't have any hair i would look at you if i was them I would, wouldn't you look at yourself like like oh okay i was like cool let's go let's go talk to them and then we just go right back so it's like not so if someone could be perfect and think everyone's laughing at them because they're insecure so right. really it, you know what i mean so it's so if the so the energy like that i was like you're unique right like she she's like she's like when my chef comes i don't think i want hair like it's not who I am. Like, she's like, why would I ever want hair? Like, it's such a weird thing to want. Like, she's like, it's, it would be so weird for me, right? Like, it's something that, like, it's not, like, it almost never comes up as something, there's nothing deficient. She's not missing anything at all, right? And that's how she believes because, like, she, like, and it's building that, like, yes, that inner confidence of, you know, not, like, also not denying that you have that feeling, but also, like, being, like, real, real, like, real with yourself real with like our kids and and not like jumping in to fix them or save them and stuff like that right because like you can have like a person who has everything and think people are laughing at them and stuff like that yeah you know so that like what we do like in spirit for life is like we want every woman to to have that inner strong girl like have that inner warrior so that they're not affected by every single thing that's going on around them like if you're solid you're solid right and that it takes like for me to be at this place right now and not care about other people's opinions and do what I feel is best for me. Oh, it is like the most freeing feeling. I walk down the street and I'm like, I can't believe I got here. Right. Like I know how I used to feel. And that's also what helps me help people because I know, I know that feeling. I know how it feels. Yeah. Right. So it's, 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 it's definitely dedication and commitment, but it's, it's achievable for anybody. Do you think there's one thing that you do in your day-to-day -day life that gives you that that inbuilt enthusiasm and confidence day-to-day? -day? So I think for me, it's more of like, like, like I don't have an easy life and I didn't have easy, I didn't have it easy. But one thing that I have is that I I never give up. Like I always believe that if I keep going, I will one day get there. Like I believe I can have it. And not everybody believes that. People stop and stop and say, I can't ever get that. I will never get that. Or I don't have what it takes. Or I I see I, I have like a relentless, like, like, like people call me like tenacious, right? Like I'm not gonna give up. No matter like how much and how many times I fall and I'm like doing the same thing, it's not working, I believe one day it will work. And that's what I tell my clients. Because they'll fail a million times. But why? Because one day it will become easy. And that's that's what you need. Like expect failure. And I do, I don't expect it to be easy, but I expect to get to the place that I can feel inner like joy and love and completeness, you know? Yeah, I think in order, if that's really, that's, that's great. I, I really admire that. And I think it's not every day that you find people that are so convicted and with such a strong belief that they'll find the success. And I, I really truly think that the only way to reach that success is when you embrace failure. So I had a friend who it was like their ritual every Shabbat, every Friday night, mm -hmm. they would go in around and everyone would talk about their failures for the week. Oh, I love that. Everyone That's would awesome. say like how they failed and they, they learned to embrace it so well that they just weren't afraid of it anymore. They're just like, okay, so yeah, this is how you get it. So speaking of this conviction, um, I also saw that you were on Ninja, Ninja Warriors. So how did you get onto there? And what was it like for you being on there? Right. So um, how did I get on there? So it was two years ago when I first entered. Um, what got me, what, what the first reason why I wanted to enter, like to start training for Ninja, was like a personal thing. Like I wanted to, I wanted to challenge myself physically and mentally. Um, I'm used to being like the strongest and best and right, especially amongst like religious women, but in, even in general, like, so I wanted to do something that I knew that would be actually really hard for me and I wouldn't be on the top. 
because mentally, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I would say like the mental part of doing Ninja was is the biggest breakthrough for me. There were so many things that I was so scared of, like losing control. That's an emotional thing. So I like, I need, I want to feel in control, it makes me feel safe. So when I have to jump to a high bar that I don't know if I'll make it, I can do the craziest things if I know I'm going to make it. But if I don't know I'm going to make it, it could be the simplest thing to someone else. I get scared. And then I, and then I, and then I freeze or something. So to break through that in my brain was so huge. And that's one of the big things that I did it. You and probably, as soon as I started, you probably yeah. need to do it so many times to get that confidence that you will, that you will. So pass. I will, right. I will try, I will, I will do one movement for an hour and a half straight until I get it. When most people will give up before they ever get it. So people are like, how do you, I'm like, you don't understand. I spent two private lessons doing this one movement. And the coaches were like, what is wrong with you? I'm still scared. I'm still scared. Right? Like, they're like, what are you scared of? Like, they call me a pretty cat. Right? But I'm like, going to keep doing it because I know that I will get it. I don't care how long it takes. So that, you right? So, you know, that, that, that's, that was huge for me. And as soon as I got there, I was like, okay, I want to be the first woman on the show in a skirt so I can represent, like, Orthodox Jewish woman. And, you know, it's, it's like, I just wanted to show up there and just be like, look, like all you people out there who like, so you know how many messages I got from mothers from the, about their daughters, like they all showed it to their daughters. Like, look, there's a, and, and to inspire them, just show them like, sometimes people feel like, oh, it's so unfair. We can't do this stuff. Like I felt that as a kid. Like, I wish I could have went to public school. So I could have been on the sports teams and like, right. So like, you know, there's that these, there's opportunities, you know, for, from people also like if they have dreams, whatever your dream is, go after it. And for the world to see like Kiddush Hashem, for like our Orthodox people on Netflix that are, not, you know, not just the ones you see on Netflix. Because yeah. actually people there, I was the first Orthodox Jew they met in person in their lives. Kiddush Hashem. You know? So, you know, though that was, those are the draws for me to like actually, you know, go there, do that, be on the show. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and the second year was, I was on last year. And the second year was when like I switched my goal, like changed a little bit. Um, and, and my, like, I, I, like, I internalized so much pressure the first year, like, right. And I froze, like mm -hmm. mentally, I froze. Like, mm -hmm. so the second year, my only goal was like, I need to make myself proud. Like the only person who needs to be proud is me. Like, that's why. Right. And then after that, whatever, right. So, and my goal, what made me proud was if I could be mentally there and yeah. enjoy it. And I, and I completely like, the whole experience was different. And then that's when we had, like NBC came to the house and they did a whole episode on Shabbos and, you know. Well, I didn't see that. Yeah, I have to send it to you. They came, we, I lit Shabbos candles, this whole thing. And we, got, we were all dressed for Shabbos. It was really cool. That is so unique. Wow. That's, that's so, and I love it how you started it through the fitness, through the sport. Like who would have known how like one Kiddush Hashem can like lead you in a, in a whole other direction and like the impact that you make on people's lives also without knowing it um I didn't know so you were there for two years you did this you did it two years at Ninja Warriors yeah so the first year there was like they didn't hear anything because I fell right away and they're like we want to wait for you to like do a little better so that we can make like a better story about you right mm -hmm. and then the second year was when you know I flew down with all my kids they're all in the, in the they're all involved which is also I love that they that they got to be involved. Like I do so many things with how them, like my business and all this stuff. And like, this was something that they could be involved in. Like they all flew out and they were all on the TV and they were so excited about it. Like they were part of the story, which, 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 which I really wanted for them to like, be able to like be in it with me to, to like, not me just doing something without them. Um, so that was a big thing. And then they came to our house and that's when they, so that's when this past June was like aired like across the world, you know? Yeah, that's so cool. And what surprised me is that like the other people that were performing on it, that were competing on it, they were like serious athletes, like serious, yeah, buff and like built. Yeah. And like, here you are, like, are you are you a serious athlete? I mean, you have to be, I guess. <laughs> like, how did that start? So yeah, I mean, so I like. I'm so there are people on there that like the, the, the advantage they have is they have experience with, mm -hmm. with being with competition. 
I have zero experience. So if you're a gymnast or you know how to perform under pressure, like you've done it before, you know how to go, you're right. trained. Like you've done so many, like almost everybody there has been in multiple competitions. For me, I haven't even been in local competitions because they're on Shabbos. So like you can be a serious athlete, but like not know, have that skill, right? It's like the TV's in your face. Most of those people have been in tons, have, are like, have done at least college, you know? So that was my disadvantage. So I am like, I'm not a professional athlete, but I have like, like, like I am an athlete, meaning that like, my strength is not regular, right? Like if you see some of the stuff that I do, it's it's not regular for like, yeah, it's um, like it's, yeah, yeah. So like That's if I was in agility, like a powerlifting agility. competitions, all this stuff, like I would be able to, mm -hmm. I was never ever seriously trained for anything, you know? Incredible. So when did you start training? So fitness has been my like savior my whole life, I would say, like since I was a teenager. Um, it's... It's, I would say like it kept me off drugs, like it really kept me out of trouble. But because like I, since I was young, like a teenager, I, I, I moved. Like that's how I got my energy out. That's how I got my emotions. Like whatever I was going through, I used movement to help me like a lot. It made me feel good, um, empowered. Um, or were you and, just hyper or like what, what was it that it helped No, uh, there was stuff that was going on in my life personally that like, like I had a lot of anger and, mm -hmm. and, um, and so, you know, so a lot of times I would go run or I would ride my bike, um, I would do anything in that, you know, to be able to it just let out a lot of stress, I would say, at that age. Obviously, as I get older, I learned how to use it in a better way. And now it's completely balanced. But I, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it tremendously. Like there's, you know, it's 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 like it's like my happy place. Um, so it's something that my whole life was like some, you know, that gave me a lot of like positivity. My daughter, my my daughter that we're talking about, Tila, she wakes up five thirty every morning, um, and and exercises. She likes how she likes how she, she she feels like she she focuses better, and and she she's also strong and she sees me doing that. She just copies me, you know. You um, and she's way healthier than I was at her age. What? You also wake up at five thirty. Yes, I work out before my kids before I wake up my kids because I because I have to I work all day. So like I I work out I wake up really early it's dark I go to the gym I work out I come home I wake them up I sit down and work the second they leave and then if, when they come home that you know so not I wouldn't really get into it but I always tell moms like if you have a little baby I don't have a little baby man this is five and I had a little babies I did not wake up if my baby didn't wake me up right so there's a time there's a time period in your life what's what it's right for like yeah. you know like I'm you're not waking up extra early when you have a baby that you're waking up to nurse in the middle of the night. Right. You know, at what age do you think it was that you uh, you were able to have that luxury of just waking up earlier to start your day? Right. So before before I'd say it also has to do with my work. Like if I didn't have like before when I didn't have this, like when I didn't own the right. spirit you of life, I would work out after I dropped my kids off. Yeah. You no. Know, why would I wake up extra early? But mm -hmm. I, so I just dropped them off and then I would go to the gym. Right. So it's really like what's going to work best for you in your life. Right. For me, it's like it's such a good way to start my day. I'm always in a better mood when I when I, when I wake up my kids. I feel like I filled myself up a little bit. I feel like I had time for myself. So like I do really like how my day goes after that. Yeah, for sure. And I really hear what you're saying also about Tehillah, like about the concentration throughout school. Like for me also, whenever I exercise, even if I'm not combining it with a diet, just exercising, you come back, you feel energized, you feel clean, like emotionally clean. And you just can just like face your day, tackle whatever you need to do. It just gives you energy. It's incredible. And like, I think for me, it also initially started because I wanted like weight loss. I really wanted to lose weight. So I started going walking and then it led to running. And then I think I've been running like for the past seven years of my life. And like wow. when I run now, it's an emotional experience. Mm -hmm. It's, it's oh, my, my friend calls it floating, floating through the air, right. like feeling the breeze on your skin and you're connecting with the nature right. and the trees. And, and it's just like, it's, it's an almost out of, out of body experience. Every time I try it, like you hit that point in your run where you feel mm -hmm. the rush of the adrenaline. And I think like once you turn it from like a pain, like from a, a pain to something pleasurable, there's nothing, nothing beats it. 
Right. The thing is that most people don't ever get to feel that feeling, right? Like if you're heavy and you're exercising, it does not feel good. If mm -hmm. you're out of shape and you're exercising, if you're weak, even if no matter if you're super thin and weak, it does not feel good, right? right. Mm -hmm. So most people don't ever get to that place because they hate it. So they don't do it. And it's that's why it's, it's so much of what we do is it's so mental, right? Like right. mentally, you need to mentally like right. you need to mentally be strong in order to get to that place. Right. But that's, I, that's, but I think that there's two, there, there's different types of exercises. Like what I do, my floating, when I, when I jog, that's like a comfort place that I reach. Some people will look at me and be like, Hannah, that's like not even sports. Like you're just staying in the same place. You're not improving. It's not like muscle work or it's not, you're not really, you know, improving yourself. And then sometimes I see my friends who do CrossFit and they're lifting these crazy weights and like, I see them that they're, they're struggling when they're doing it. They're not enjoying themselves per se. They're, they're hustling and that's hard. And I think it's right. like different styles of workouts. And I think that just, it's, it's different, you know, it depends on what your goals are and depends on what you want. Yeah. Like it really depends on what the motivation is. So it's, you know, it's, it's whatever it is, it's if your motivation is to be physically like muscle and lift a certain amount. And that pain is enjoyable. Of course it hurts. Who cares? You love it kills like i collapse almost every time like after I, like i push myself to like failure sometimes i love it kills so fun like it's just like you know so it's it, it's it's not necessarily ne equal to negative but if i was in the headspace of oh this is so hard i'm so tired how am i gonna do this my workout's gonna be so hard right but if you just change the way you think about it change the way even if you can't lie to yourself you can't be like oh, i love this but it's like this is so <laughs> hard i am not enjoying this but yeah. I'm doing this because I know it's good for me. And just even thinking like that changes things. Like mentally, it changes the way you think about how you do stuff. It, sh it just it shifts because it doesn't matter if I'm in the mood to exercise. If you run your life by your moods, which most people do, then you'll never get anywhere because one day you'll be in a good mood and one day you'll be in a bad mood. One day you'll be angry, one day you'll be happy. It doesn't work like that. Like that's why discipline, like it's not about motivation. I always tell everyone, I'm like, motivation is fleeting. I'm never motivated, only sometimes. Sometimes I'm motivated, but most of the time, it's not that I'm motivated, I'm disciplined. So when you learn discipline, that's when you'll be able to maintain or keep or do whatever you want to do, yeah. right? So anything extreme is like, I'm holding on so tight, but eventually your grip your grip has to let go and then you let, and then everything goes. So that's the difference between actually building as opposed to jumping in and going extreme to something, you yeah. know? Yeah, I wanted to ask you, it's a little bit of a personal question, but... Like, I see you as someone that's very fit. Like, are you naturally, like, fit? Are you naturally in this, like, you know, um, shape or or not? And when you exercise, do you feel like you're doing it to stay fit or is it more to build muscle? Right. Okay, good question. So let me just backtrack a job. People ask me a lot of times, like, how could you talk about weight loss or any of this stuff? Like, yeah. you're so small. You never right. have to lose weight. And it's like, it's like you don't, like, you don't understand how I feel, which validation like you know meaning that like that's a it's like telling somebody like who let's say had a child pass like you don't know what it feels like right so let me explain to you what i always say which is like if you struggle with an unhealthy relationship with yourself like your body it's something it's 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 gonna manifest differently on the outside for every person mm -hmm. so you might look heavy i might look thin i might look like just regular you might not know but mm -hmm. internally I'm suffering just as much as someone who would be, let's say, heavy. It's just going to look different and maybe even be a slightly different. But the pain is similar pain, right? So which means like the internal turmoil of hating how you look, being disgusted with yourself, right? All that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's how, that's why I could, I, that's why I could relate to anybody who struggles with any type of sort of body image, um, uncomfortable with themselves, that, that kind of thing, because I was there. Right. And that and that, that's also why I'm so strong on the fact of like you can change the way you look, but if you don't change what's going on inside, you will stay the same. Meaning you your your relationship with yourself won't actually change. It'll always be a fear that you'll gain it back. You'll keep wanting more. You'll never actually be happy if you don't change actually what's going on inside. Because I pretty much have similar body that I had 20 years ago, mm. but I hated I I wanted to die like and get reborn in a different body. Like I, I, I was so ashamed of, of myself. So to how I am now, which is like, woohoo, pose naked, right? Meaning like extremes, but you get what I'm saying, like, yeah, right? Yeah. So that's that. So I, so yes, yeah, someone might need to 
th that doesn't mean you got to value the fact of like a physical a physical change because to that person that goal is very important right which which but we want to do it so that's how like I, that's not why like i can understand someone like that me myself i was um i'm naturally like a thin person um um that doesn't mean if i didn't work out that i would i would probably not be like i would just probably just be like an average type like you know average weight average like yeah. like i wouldn't just be those people eat whatever they want and be thin you know yeah. like that i would just you know but when you let's say my physical strength by working out the way i work out which is not obsessively it's like maybe four four to five times a week max um like one hour and it's only because i want to like like i don't even count i don't even know i don't plan anything i just walk in there like it's a playground and do whatever so i'm not trying to build i'm not trying to anything i'm just trying to like i, I like i want to make keep what i have and if, if more muscle grows because i'm doing something because i like it it will come like you know mm -hmm. so that's kind of how i look at it at this point um, um but my like my i have like like people could work out as much as me and never ever have or even five times as much as me and not have the same physical strength so i have like it's like beating like you have so you have to train like crazy but you intrinsically you have a talent that you are a nat like i think every athlete has a natural talent that when they train right their talent comes out Does that right. make sense it's like people that the second they start dieting they they just like remove it in seconds Right. the word in hebrew oh, really? uh, yeah so it's like really fast results actually i think i'm like that i think for me whenever i want to cool. lose weight i lose weight really fast but then i love eating for me like i love food it just like i'll die for you two should <laughs> and after two weeks i'll be like that's it i can't can't do this anymore right <laughs> it's always the right. two mark. that's why right Yes. So that's why we, we, you know, how we coach our whole nutrition method. It's not like it's lifestyle. So how you're going to eat is the way you want to eat for the rest of your life. Because as soon as you're on a diet, you feel restricted. You're missing out. You're not eating your favorite foods. Like every single, like we should eat our favorite foods all the time, but like in ways that are better for our body. So it's not like you're not on a diet, but like, I don't want to eat margarine all day. So how do I make that cookie with healthier ingredients and then have them every Shabbos, right? It's all like about balance because in general, I want to feed myself high, like I'm a high quality person. I deserve it. So why would I give myself garbage? It's a different way of looking at it. So making sure that we eat the foods that we like in a, in a balanced way and in a healthier version so that you can maintain it and you don't feel like you're missing something, you know? Yeah. You know, who's really good with that. There's, um, get fit, Ima, Ilani, Giorno. She does that. And she's always like just giving out different recipes and That's she also awesome. speaks a lot about lifestyle. Um, but so what I wanted to ask you is, so when you go to this, the playground, I love it that you refer it to like that. It sounds mm. like fun and exciting. I want to start going back. Right. To the playground. Like, so do you focus more on cardio or muscles? So yeah, like cardio, I almost never do like just straight cardio ever. Like mm. I don't go on machine treadmills and, and like, oh, maybe I warm up like that, like to warm up my joints five, maybe eight minutes. Mm -hmm. And then it's almost everything I do is like strength, um, like strength like it's endurance mm. so like meaning so it's like strength endurance so like I, I do like crazy high jumps but I also like I'll balance on like um on like the like on on, on like the foam rollers and I'll squat on foam rollers while I'm throwing a ball at a trampoline like literally so I'm like standing on a foam roller like trying to balance and then I'm throwing a ball at a trampoline that costs 12 that like weighs 12 pounds and I have to catch it without falling off so mm -hmm. that's like my whole entire body is engaged. Mm -hmm. Every part of me is like my, my core, everything's be working. And then my heart rate's going up because I'm throwing the ball. So that's like my style of training. Like it's very unique. Like I'm like a show at the gym. I was like, what is she training for? Like, <laughs> like, like the weirdest stuff. <laughs> Crazy. It's so fun. That's yeah. fierce. That's really fierce. Um, that's incredible. And I understand you do this wearing a skirt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's like a Hanabana skirt, of course. Yes, I love your skirt. It's so cute. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's actually like it's like it's uh, it fits me so well, which is weird. And I love how like it, it like looks so cute on. So it's fun. I I love it. I love it that you're getting so much use out of it, and like you just it looks so natural on you, like it was made for you. Yeah, it's really nice. I love, love it. it. Yeah. So, but it's it, that's also a kiddush Hashem walking into the gym in in Arizona. Yeah. And just rocking your your skirt and exercising, like 
what's it like for you? What's it like for you wearing a skirt while you exercise? Um, so it depends. Like sometimes I like it and sometimes I hate it. Like honestly, you know? Yeah. Like sometimes it's uh, it's it's um it's cool like to stand out and to be like represent something and you know like it's obviously it's like it's you don't just blend like I don't blend because like not just because I'm wearing a skirt because of what I do like my my athletic ability you know yeah. so it's, it, it, it's it's knowing that like it's it's a it's it's a responsibility right you know to like represent yeah. something and then there's other times that you just just there's other times that I'm just like oh why don't I love like showing off my muscles and, <laughs> it's so fun <laughs> yeah like it's not to show up but it's, it's not about like showing off but it's like it's it's about like someone explained it, like, it you have a nice painting do you like keep it in like your closet no like it's it's like there's like you're feeling like it's fun I like like looking at myself like like while I'm working out and like seeing my, like so it's just yeah. it's a mix you know yeah. like looking at your accomplishments yeah. when I was in kindergarten yeah. I used to paint pictures I used to leave I used to leave gone kindergarten literally walking out to the car like if this was my painting I would be like this yeah <laughs> yeah so cool. like, for everyone to see because that's that's the whole fun right you want to like share it with right. everyone when you're proud of what you're doing so that's really great and like I mean I know I know it could be frustrating and also just like exciting sometimes like for me also when I'm covering my hair and for me it's it's still new covering my hair I'm just about to celebrate like one year um being married but like still sometimes I'm like I look at you know my sister who doesn't cover her hair and I'm like oh my gosh like you know sometimes like I want to be like that like I want to be religious and not cover the hair but then I'm like thinking no but right now th like this is meaningful to me and like right. so where does Sneut come into your life how do you relate to it today um I'm trying to think what, like how do I relate to it what do you mean like what do you mean by that like when you when you dress this way like when you dress like wearing skirts and you have the extra coverage like what is it what does it mean to you is it just a way of is it just a way is it just like that you're used to it so you just do it or like do you do no. it feel I don't really do anything because I'm used to it like that's like I oh I'm a questioner like I question everything um you just like I am also I don't like being a Jew that that that's like a cultural Jew. Like, I don't care what, like, I don't want to do things. That, I, I like to be different anyway. So like, just yeah. because you're doing it doesn't mean it's right. I, I, there's a, there's a mix. It's, it's, it's very set, like not sensitive. It's a very complex like thing for me to like comprehend in a lot of ways um, because it's not so black and white. Like a lot of the stuff are, are not so black and white. Um, so just one thing that I really identify with is also like when you're dressing a certain way, you're also identifying with certain people, right? And that's, and that alone is something, right? It's like saying like, I'm part of the, I'm part of that, right? I, I believe in that, or I support that or whatever it is, right? And that's, and I stand for something. There's a lot of things that come along with it, you know? And mm -hmm. understanding that, like when that, that, that's, 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 um, that represents something, right? Like modesty and, and um, value and all that kind of stuff, you know? So to me, that's, that's like a big part of also, which is not necessarily like, talked about is more of like rules or stuff like that um that that that's something that like you know I think about a lot you know when when standing out and stuff like that yeah and how does it make you feel when you dress more modest how does it make me feel hmm um I mean I think that it's it it it, it a lot um it shifts the 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 um the emphasis and the energy just on like just on the physical because you could you it's not about covering up like it's not to me it's not just about like it's not about like you shouldn't look like it's inappropriate right but it's it's balancing out the physical and the spiritual like mm -hmm. right so it, it, it makes it more balanced and if like you're in barely dressed then it's like it's very imbalanced right mm -hmm. so yeah. you can't really see the spiritual because it's so it's so glaring let's say the physical you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of my friends who are, some of them are really talented. And like, when I see them, when I see their profiles, like when they share what they actually create instead of just them, it's like, it allows me to dive deeper into who they are, into their train of thought, into their creativity. Mm -hmm. 
as opposed yeah, to like when it. I see only pictures of them, then it's like it reaches it reaches a, a, a limit to how deep you can go and and how interested I think the audience. Yeah, is. yeah, hundred percent. Like that's how that's how I like view kind of everything. Like I love hearing about what why people do things. Like what do you what do you do for your career? Like why? Like yeah. it's, like like it just helps. It's like such an understanding of like how people think and feel and so like that like when you it's like almost like you can't like you don't like it's it's there's so much attention there so like it's hard to like even like I, whatever and I think even for females to females like when someone walks in the room they're like glamorous and like let's like you imagine an extreme right they're wearing like the latest and everything yeah. tons like you know who cares who they are where'd you get your stuff from or, or like or you don't even know like be who they are but like it's just like whoa like all you can see yeah. is that because it's so different right so it's kind of like it's kind of like nobody really says like I want to get to know her and I wonder like how connected she is with her soul like no one's gonna say that you know what I mean <laughs> yeah it's it's true it's fun sometimes making friends with someone who like Dafka isn't isn't all shiny right. and sparkly like yeah who are you what, what's your story right. and then it's then yeah. you're always surprised you know then the light seems yeah. bigger anyway speaking of 100%. light as you can see in the background, we're looking at candles of the fifth night of Hanukkah. And um, and like whoever is listening to this and who doesn't know about Hanukkah, Hanukkah is one of our holidays where we celebrate the miracle of the oil lasting in um, Beit HaMikdash for the entire eight days in the Hechal. And um, I just wanted to ask you, like, how are you celebrating Hanukkah? And what is this Chag, what does it mean to you? So um, how am I celebrating Hanukkah? So, um, so, um, so but th this is my first Hanukkah, being a single mom, getting a personal over here. Um, and it's, it's, yeah, it's a little bit of a different experience than, uh, let's say, um, my usual Hanukkah. Mm -hmm. right um but it's also at the same time so like so empowering and i'm explaining to you why for like for me hanukkah represents like the small like the the the, the how the like the small conquered like the mighty right like the the, the, the makabim they were they didn't have the like, good weapons they weren't shiny they weren't right they didn't have everything prepared and they were just so few and they were able to conquer like the mightiest army which is insane Right, which means that they believe in something so strongly, and their belief in that conquered everything. That's how I try to live my life in general. Like, I don't have anything that someone else doesn't have. Why was I able to build a company so fast that was successful? I'm not a better education. I'm not smarter. I just, right, like I said in the beginning, I just believe that I could do it. Right, because I have a, a because behind that is a is a is a strong belief right meaning what why they went because they believed in um they believed in Hashem they believed in Torah they believe that this is that this is um this is this is the way that they should live right so for me it's like my belief in in um in helping women in debt all this kind of stuff and in my own personal life is so strong that it's that it that it that it, that it happens that it's possible right and physically I'm small I mean everything so it's just it's it's like and I think every single person, every single individual, like we all have our inner warrior. We we need to access it. We need to build our weapons, right? Like in our positive way, like we need to build our emotional, physical strength so that we can be strong enough when we're faced with whatever it is, right? Struggles, personal struggles. And we will, right? So no matter, right, everybody does, exactly. And that's like, and that's what it is. Like when you face those struggles, no matter how hard your life is, if you have that inner strength, right, and joy, it might be hard and painful, but it won't break you. And you can still have joy amongst the pain because there's this solid strength internally, right? Mm -hmm. So if we can all access that, like, the, like we will all experience better relationships, better joy, everything in life, you know? Yeah, yeah. I saw that you... That you shared a, a picture of the inner warrior, the inner Hanukkah warrior. Tell me more about the warrior. Yeah, I mean, I love. I like in my dreams. I'm like an like an Amazon woman. Like, you know, that just <laughs> like literally. Am I like? Yeah. You know, like that's what I would like. Like, you know, part of me, 
part of myself, but um, it's just like, I think that specifically in the firm world, like we don't talk about like women being strong, right? Like, and, and if you look at our, our like history, like women were strong, like mm-hmm. they were, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, we talk about like, yes, yeah, certain strength, but like quietly, or like, they're not telling girls in school, like strong, they're not saying those stuff. Like they're right. Even when they talk about modesty, they're not saying they're, they're not empowering. Mm -hmm. right it's like small it's like you know this quote of like I'll no longer put myself into places that I don't fit like make myself small right so it's like if if we can if we can you if we can like talk about that like where's your inner strong girl like that warrior inside of you to our kids to ourselves like how much more empowering is that like you know to be able to feel like that like that's a power pose like stand like that and feel like when I want felt small when I was working on myself I would stand up on a chair make myself huge like this, like my hands would be up. And I would just say, like, I would literally feel in my heart, like you are like, but emotionally, like how big I am, right? Like meaning how emotionally important I am and, and unique I am. And, and then I would get on a call with a potential client and I believed in myself, right? Because I would like feel it and, and I physically made myself big because that's a, that's a power thing, right? If you sit like this and you try to say, you are great, you are great, it's not going to work. Right. Mm-hmm. But that's kind of like, that's the power pose of like, I am a, yeah. I am a warrior, okay. Okay. you know, yeah. and that, yes. And that doesn't, that, and it's, it means being feminine. It doesn't mean like, I need to be like tough, not at all. Like the, the fact that if you could be, a, if you want to be super feminine, then that should be who you should be with, with strength. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, so yeah. Wow. That's, that's really great. I, I heard something about um, from Chabad that Dov Ber Shnerson, the rabbi, said that when you're looking into the lights, you have to like listen. You have to listen to what they're telling you. Listen and look and see what they're telling you. And and they compare it to like the dance of the neshama. And um, so like for me, I was single actually a, a really long time. I was dating also getting personal here I was like in the dating circle for like seven years and I remember like the nights where I would look into the light and like I would just I would just like look at the fire and I would like pour my heart out I would like pour my heart out and pray and and just connect with the fire and I think it's it's just such a beautiful part of Judaism that we have that yeah those minutes of prayers um, and, and I, I didn't know about your, your, you know, this is your first year as a single mom. Um, but I, I think, yeah, Hanukkah is such a, it's such a like strengthening hug. So I'm sure it's going to give you the strength that you need. And mm-hmm. it's not, I don't think you have all the motivation that you need. It's just like a matter of time until you conquer your dreams and conquer these milestones you're, you're b- building towards. Yes. Yes, yeah. and this will end up like an example. Like I posted a video yesterday about like, look out, there are people who are sad and alone on mm-hmm. this time of year, right? Mm-hmm. And I got a bunch of messages like, I hope you're like sending me strength, right? Which in the past, I would like be, I would be like, oh, people are going to think I'm talking about myself. And I'm like, oh, I don't care. Like, if people think it's about me, then awesome. But it's, I know I, like I sent that message out for other people, right? So that's like not caring, I mean, living your life like, knowing your strength and it, if other people see differently or it doesn't matter because you are good inside yourself right mm-hmm. so like that's just that 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 inner strength is like no one else it's you it's about your own self it's about doing hard things and not doing things just because other people are going to say or think something it's about like being that solid strong self within within you know within your own self so that you can then then go be physically strong reach in all your goals and everything you know yeah yeah that's a really yes. nice message it's really it's incredible that you've reached that inner confidence that you're able to do that so i wanted to give your followers and whoever's listening to this a special offer on <clears throat> our sportswear hanabana i wanted to give them a 10 percent discount um on the website um by using liba 10 coupon code and um of course you know i'm just really inspired by what you're doing and and the the path that you're on so i hope more women can also benefit 
from, you know, building their strength and looking cute while they do it. Um, and I don't know if this was so, so much fun to hear, to hear more, just understand more of your stories. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, and happy Hanukkah. Thank you. Thanks for listening, everyone.